flagging, because brown doesn't always stand for UPS. Welcome everyone to Powered and Protected by Rainbows. I'm of course your host, Matt Haslam, and on today's program, we're having more fun with flags. I'm Dr. Sheldon Cooper, and welcome to the premiere episode of Sheldon Cooper Presents Fun with Flags. <laughs> now, if you're wondering what flagging is, where it came from, and what it's used for nowadays, and how exactly you can flag in the future, then you've come to the right place, and this episode will answer all of those questions for you. First off, what is flagging? It's basically the use of handkerchiefs, scarves, gear, or other accessories to show off uh, who you are as a person uh, or what you want in a potential partner one day. And it's used in different colors or patterns on your handkerchief, your scarf, your gear, or other accessories to do so. So where did flagging originate? Well, not so long ago, I'm talking about maybe 30 years ago, uh, in America here, we used to imprison people for being gay or transgender. And in other countries in the world, they still do imprison you or even sentence you to death for being gay or transgender. But in America, it was used not so long ago uh, for a way to flag to others that they're also a member of the community and it's safe to talk to them without being, uh, without fear of being thrown in prison and being baited into talking to a cop and exposing yourself as gay or trans. And again, I'm not talking too far back in history because this is something where even my late uncle used to do back before I was born and different cities that he lived in across America, like San Francisco or New York. It was very prevalent in the gay community because back in those days you had to hide underground and uh, only get together with your entire gay community in like the cellars of a bar that was accepting of it, or you would hide in the tunnels underground of a city, or you would even back in those days rent a house with other gay community members, and that way you can talk openly about being gay, at least in your home, own home, and you can feel safe in doing so. But out on the street, there was no real way to know if someone was gay or not, and whether it was safe to talk to them or not, or whether it was safe to even check them out too much and enjoy watching them walk by. So they came up with a system called flagging in order to uh, tell others that it's okay to talk to them on the street about being gay a little bit. Now, if you're wondering why the cops didn't catch on to this whole system and just take a handkerchief and put it in their back pocket as well, in baiting someone and talking to them, um, basically they did. They honestly caught wise to this whole system, and that's why back in the days, uh, in cities, they used to change the color or the pattern on that handkerchief weekly, if not daily, in order to basically fool the cops and not let the cops keep up with the system. So if that was a system basically only a couple decades ago, back when it wasn't safe to be gay in America, well then how come now that it is more widely accepted and no longer illegal in America to be gay, how come we still have this thing called flagging? Because now it's safe to be gay and now it's okay to have a pride event even. Like, I'm just gonna pause here and and say how far we have come in America from imprisoning our gay population to now having a pride event in our nation's capital last year that I went to. As far as flagging goes, well, why is it still a thing nowadays? And well, yes, it's, it's not for the same reasoning. Um, we're not trying to flag other members of our community out on the street to let them know it's safe to talk to us anymore. It's now used as a way to describe yourself in the community. That way you can flag other members who understand the system and say, here's who I am and maybe here's what I'm looking for in a potential partner. So you might be asking yourself, well, well why choose a handkerchief in your back pocket as the way to flag others, even back in the day when this was more of a necessity uh, compared to nowadays? Why choose your back pocket and why a handkerchief? Well, uh, if you think about it for a moment, it's really quite simple. And it honestly, and funny enough, boils down to where you're gonna look on someone to check them out. I know it's weird and funny to hear, but if you're a gay person like I am or many, many other gay people out there over the years, um, where are you gonna look at on another guy to check them out to see how cute they are or how physically attracted you are to them? You're gonna look at their backside first and uh, 
honestly right by their back pockets first. So what do all the colors and patterns in flagging mean? Well, if you take a look at my last episode on flags, you'll realize all of the different tribes, the communities, and groups inside of the LGBTQ community, such as bears, twinks, pups, otters, uh, lipstick lesbians, all of these different tribes and groups inside of the community where uh, you have different patterns in flagging as well. So if you identify yourself as one of those tribes or communities or groups, then you can definitely check out uh, that tribe plus uh, your color of choice on the following list. And uh, you can definitely find handkerchiefs or scarves or gear or accessories to go along with that. That way you can flag at your next pride event or just walking around town next time you go around or your next gay bar trip or whatever. So what do all the colors mean between the, you know, black, dark blue, light blue, brown, green, gray, orange, purple, yellow, and red? What do they all mean? And before I actually get into this list specifically, I want to uh, preface it by saying that I try to keep this show family friendly for anyone of any age to watch. And so that way parents aren't getting mad at me for sharing too much information uh, to their kids too early on. So if you're old enough and you wanna know what this information actually does mean, then please do research it on your own, whether it be typing into Google, uh, gay flagging, LGBTQ flagging, anything like that. And you should pop up within the first like couple search results, the Wikipedia page where it describes all of these truthfully and what they mean in their entirety. Um, I'm only going to hint as to what all of these mean and leave it up to you to kind of like do your own research on this one because all of these different colors are very physical in their uh, descriptions and in their nature. So I don't want to give too much information out there because again, I'm trying to keep things PG. So first up, black describes anyone who likes to be a boss. Dark blue describes anyone who likes hiking in caves. Light blue is for people who like to talk a lot. Brown is, believe it or not, not always a color for UPS. It's sometimes meaning something else that I'm gonna let you research on your own. Green is for people who have a lot of money and don't mind spending it. Gray is for anyone who likes 50 different shades of a certain color. Orange is for pretty much anyone who is adventurous. Purple is for people who like metal. Yellow is something I'm gonna let you research on your own again, because no, it is not just a color of DHL. And finally, red. I think everyone who sees red flagging for the first time on a really skinny dude has the same reaction I did um, when I first saw it on a really skinny dude. And it's always like, congratulations. Um, I don't know how you do it, but um, not for me, but um, kudos and good job and enjoy. But seriously, how? <laughs> and while none of these descriptions are actual descriptions of what those colors really mean, please don't take these as literal definitions of what those colors mean and just go, wow, I really like uh, metal music, so I should go out and get this color flag. No, please don't take these as actual definitions of these colors. Um, if you're uh, of age and want to research what these mean, then please type into Google um, gay flagging and you'll come up with this list. And once you read the list and what they actually mean, I hope that you come back to this video and have quite a bit of laughs at those inside jokes of what those descriptions I just read off were. But um, basically with flagging, I hope that you have a lot of fun with it. But please note before you go to your next Pride event, please take a look at this list and know what uh, kind of flagging you could be potentially giving off. So if you chose different accessories or scarves or anything like that, um, which are of different colors, then you might want to look at this list and know, okay, that's what that color symbolizes when it comes to flagging. So maybe if you don't describe yourself as a person who likes or prefers the thing that that color describes, maybe you want to choose a different accessory to wear at your next Pride event because other people might look at that accessory and might not understand it's just an accessory and they might take it as, or they might understand it as flagging and come up to you thinking that that's what you like or that's what you prefer in a partner. But with that specifically said, I mean, this isn't something where you should just walk up to someone and think, oh, that's what they want to talk about either. I mean, this isn't something where you're supposed to see a certain color handkerchief hanging out of their back pocket and run up to them and be like, oh my God, I love XYZ thing too. Okay, like 
don't just start your conversation with that. It's a way to continue a conversation, but it's not really supposed to be something to break the ice in a conversation. And while yes, it's true you can go out and get yourself handkerchiefs, scarves, accessories, and other gear that's made specifically for flagging in these certain colors or patterns that describe different tribes or communities inside the LGBTQ, it's really not something where you necessarily have to buy the on branding thing. Um, a lot of times you can find, again, fabrics and patterns at craft stores or even your local Walmart or anything like that where it matches the color and the patterns anyway. You don't necessarily need a certain thing for this um, to flag someone that you are a member of that specific community. Um, you can definitely find different patterns out there that match it pretty closely. So if you don't necessarily like the texture, the pattern, or the color of certain items made specifically for flagging that you can find on Amazon or other websites in the LGBTQ community, if you don't necessarily like that, you can go out and find your own materials. You can uh, make your own stuff even if you want. Um, you can find different uh, fabrics in uh, fabric stores and make your own handkerchiefs. You can uh, put little accessories on your backpack. You can find or make gear that is not specific to the LGBTQ community and just find it on your own and have a lot of fun with it. Really, uh, flagging is something to show off kind of a part of who you are. And if you want to show off your creative side, that's fantastic too, because it potentially shows someone that not only do I belong to whatever tribe or community, and not only do I like this and uh, I want this in a potential partner, but I'm creative too. I'm, I'm an artist. I, I, I like to make things on my own. It really showcases your personality more by something that you made compared to something that you just bought in a store. And while a vast majority of you out there are normal and you uh, understand a topic on this show is just meant to be a topic, there are some out there who might uh, want to see examples of the different flagging that I personally use at Pride events. They might be wondering if I spend an entire episode on Pride flags, how many Pride flags do I have? Well, I have two. One is colored like this and another one is another pattern. Um, and I also have a lot of flagging as well with different colors and patterns on it as well. And no, before you ask, I'm not going to show it on camera because that's a lot of information to share with the public on an open forum. So if you really, really wanna know what um, flagging I use, then come to a Pride event that I'll be at and see for yourself. And I mean, nothing in my life is normal anymore. So if, if that's the way I find my next boyfriend is someone coming to a Pride event specifically to look at my flagging and and uh, starting a relationship that way, then, I mean, I'm not saying I would deny the relationship. I just, it's a weird way to, st I mean, all those days on Grinder are just a complete waste then, but you know, hey, whatever. But anyway, that is our episode for today and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot by it. And I hope the next Pride event that comes up for you that you have a lot more information now and you can understand what all of those different colors mean now a little more and have a little more appreciation for everything that's going on around you. And I hope that you liked and enjoyed this so much and you've learned so much from this that you're willing to hit that like button, hit that red subscribe button for plenty more great gay content to come this Pride Month. There's a lot going on this Pride Month and we're packing as much gay content into this month as possible. So please do stay tuned for episodes to come on Pride Month. It is gonna be amazing and plenty more great gay content to come after that as well. We're not planning on stopping after June is over, so please stay tuned for a lot, a lot of rainbows to come. And this month, rather than trying to peddle some of my own t-shirts this season, I'm gonna encourage you to check out three different charities and go to their websites, check them out, and consider donating any amount you can. Every single dollar helps here. The first of which is the Trevor Project, which is the nation's leading organization helping at-risk LGBTQ kids across America and preventing youth LGBTQ suicide. Um, it is a vast problem in our community, in this country, and far beyond of kids thinking that it's a better solution to end their life than come out to the world as who they really are or who they love. So please consider donating to that charity. 
The second of which is Have a Gay Day, which is an organization set up to help at-risk LGBTQ youth who come out to their parents and are thrown out on the streets by their unforgiving and unaccepting parents. And I use the word parent uh, sparingly there because in my eyes, they are not parents if they give up on their children and don't love them no matter what. Um, but in those cases, Have a Gay Day helps them out and trying to find homes for them and trying to find a uh, first off a home for the night and secondly a uh, loving home from there on so please consider donating to them as well and finally is rainbow railroad which is a charity helping at-risk lgbtq across the globe there are over 70 countries across the world that still in prison and murder lgbtq folks out there and rainbow railroad is a charity to help them escape those at-risk countries and come to very loving and accepting uh, countries and provide them a way to have a wonderful life being open and out. Anyway, thanks for watching Powered and Protected by Rainbows. I'm, of course, your host, Matt Haslam. Happy Pride Month and have a great day, everyone. Bye for now.